Hello everyone, welcome to the channel TopGate. In this video, I'll discuss the third solution to the critical section problem involving two number of processes. In the previous two lectures, we have seen uh, two solutions for the critical section problem, but both of those solutions were not able to satisfy the mandatory requirements of the critical section problem solution. Clear? So in this one, we'll see that whether this solution is able to satisfy all the three requirements of the critical section problem or not. So let's straight away start the lecture. So in this one, we can say that this solution is the combination of the first two solutions. Clear? In the first solution, we use the variable turn. In the second solution, we use the variable flag. But in this one, we'll use both of those variables, the turn variable as well as the flag variable. And both these variables are the shared variables. Clear? So we have flag variable, which is of error type that can have only two elements, one and two, that is of Boolean, that is flag one and flag two can be either true or false. As well as we have a shared variable turn that can have only two values, either one or two. Clear? So uh, this is the code for P1 and this is the code for P2. And this code is actually in the structure of the typical process PI. Okay. So it is uh, your uh, entry section and then the critical section and then your exit section, finally the remainder section. Clear? So we'll discuss this uh, and we'll see that whether it is able to satisfy all those three requirements or not. So I'll take uh, several situations and if in every situation we'll see that whether all those three requirements are being satisfied or not. So uh, I'll just uh, write it down here. That is we have the first requirement as mutual exclusion, the second one as progress and the third one as bounded weighting. Okay. So uh, we'll do several context switches. We'll take several situations and then in every situation we'll see that all these three requirements should be satisfied clear so we have two variables flag and turn as well as we just have to assume that initially both the values of the flag will be set to false that is flag one is equal to false and flag two is equal to false so i'll just write it down here flag one is equal to false initially as well as flag 2 is equal to false and turn can have any value. So I'll let it be as 1. So initially the value of turn that we have set as 1 and the flag 1 is false. Flag 2 is also false. That is your assumption that we have to do initially. Clear? For satisfying this mutual exclusion uh, condition, we'll first take two situations. The, in the first situation, we'll see that P1 comes first. And then when P1 is working in the critical section, at that moment P2 comes. And then we'll see that whether P2 also can go to the critical section or not. If it is able to go to the critical section at that time when P1 is there in the critical section, then mutual exclusion is not satisfied. Clear? In the second situation, we'll see that process P1 and P2, both of these processes come together and they at the same time they want to go to the critical section. And then we have to see that out of these two, any one, only one should be allowed to go to the critical section. If both are able to go to the critical section, mutual exclusion is not satisfied. So the first situation, when only P1 is willing to go to the critical section, P2 right now is not there in the scene at all. It is not willing to go to the critical section. Clear? So what P1 will write? P1 will write flag one is equal to true. That is, since P1 is willing to go to the critical section, that is why it is setting its value as true. Initially, it was set to false. Now, since it wants to go to the critical section, therefore, it is setting its value as true. Clear? Now, after setting its value as true, it will write turn is equal to two. Now, what is this uh, turn is equal to two? That means Process P1 is thinking that let it be process P2 who wants to go to the critical section. So it is actually giving chance to process P2 to go to the critical section. Clear? So it is writing turn is equal to 2. So initially the value of turn was 1. Now it is turn is equal to 2. Now after doing this, it will execute a while loop. It will write while flag 2 is equal to true and and turn is equal to 2, do skip. That is, if both of these value are true, then it will continue to skip in the while loop. But if any one of the, of the two values is false, then this while loop will be broken and it will go to the critical section. Okay, so it is writing flag 2 is equal to true. So flag 2 is initially 
false therefore this condition becomes false and then turn is equal to 2 turn is equal to 2 yes turn that is p1 has only done it turn is equal to 2 therefore out of these two conditions one condition is false therefore this while loop is broken and process p1 goes to the critical section clear now process p1 is working in the critical section at that moment process p2 comes and now it wants to go to the critical section so what will it write it will write flag 2 is equal to 2 that is since it is wanting to go to the critical section therefore it is setting its value as true therefore this value will become true okay so flag 2 is equal to true p1 is still working in the critical section and p2 is wanting to go to the critical section so it will write turn is equal to 1 that is it is doing the same thing means that it is letting process p1 go to the critical section so it is assuming that let it be process p p1 that wants to go to the critical section so it will write turn is equal to 1 so turn is equal to 2 initially it was now it will be turn is equal to 1 okay so after turn is equal to 1 now it will write while flag 1 is equal to true and turn is equal to 1 so flag 1 is equal to true and turn is equal to 1 therefore uh, both these conditions are true hence this will be stuck in the while loop it will not be able to go to the critical section clear so in this situation we can see that mutual exclusion is satisfied so i'll just stick it uh, here that mutual exclusion is satisfied for the first situation now in the second situation uh, p1 and p2 both are at the same time wanting to go to the critical section okay so this time we'll take p2 first so again i'll reset these values first that is all the values will be set to false Clear? 10 can have any value so this time we'll take p2 first so p2 will write flag 2 is equal to true so flag 2 will be set to true this time and then we'll do the context switch okay so we'll come to p1 p1 will write flag 1 is equal to true so this will also be set to true again we'll do the context switch we'll come to this one it will write turn is equal to 1 turn is already 1 again we'll do the context switch turn is equal to 2 so again we'll change the value of turn is equal to 2 again we'll do the context switch it will write while flag 1 is equal to true and turn is equal to 1 do skip so flag 1 is equal to true yes turn is equal to 2 no, it is not 1 therefore out of these two conditions one condition becomes false hence this while loop will be broken and it will go to the critical section clear and again we'll do the context switch now we'll come to this one it will write while flag 2 is equal to true flag 2 is equal to true yes and turn is equal to 2 turn is equal to 2 yes so both the conditions are true therefore it will continue to skip in the while loop it will be stuck in the while loop it will not be able to go to the critical section hence we can say that in this situation also mutual exclusion is satisfied now the second condition for the critical section problem solution is the progress okay so progress says that uh, only those process who are willing to go to the critical section will be allowed to take part in the decision making process of who will enter the critical section next those process who are not willing to go to the critical se section will not be allowed to take part in the decision making process clear and the second situation of the progress says that there should be no deadlock because in the previous solution the second solution we have seen that out of those these two p1 and p2 both were not able to go to the critical section so both were stuck in the entry section only so in this one we'll see that only those process who are willing to go to the critical section are taking part in the decision making process and there is no deadlock okay so for the first situation we'll see that uh, only those process who are willing to go to the critical section are taking part in the decision making process okay so in this one let's assume that p1 is the only process which is willing to go to the critical section p2 is not at all interested in going to the critical section okay in future it may want but right now it is only p1 which is willing to go to the critical section so p1 will write flag 1 is equal to true so before doing this we have we, we first have to set all these values to false and turn can have any value so p1 will write flag 1 is equal to true so flag 1 will be set to true and then it will write turn is equal to 2 so turn is already 2 again it will write while flag 2 is equal to true and turn is equal to 2 so flag 2 is equal to no it is false and turn is equal to 2 so it, this value is true so out of these two conditions one condition is false hence this while loop is broken and this will go to the critical section 
clear so this p1 is working in the critical section p2 still is not there in the scene clear so p1 after completing its work it will come out of the critical section and here in the exit section it will write flag 1 is equal to false so flag 1 was set to true now it will be set to false and it will terminate clear now after terminating p1 it again wants to go to the critical section p2 still is not interested in going to the critical section so again p1 will come and it will write flag 1 is equal to true again it will set the value of flag 1 is equal to true turn is equal to true which is already there while flag 2 is equal to true flag 2 is equal to false no it is not true hence out of these two conditions one condition is false hence this while loop is broken and p1 will again go to the critical section and it will start working in the critical section now you can see that since p2 is not interested therefore it is also not taking part in the decision making process since p1 is interested therefore unless and until there is no p2 p2 is not interested so at till that time p1 can go n number of times into the critical section and p2 does not have to bother in this one p2 will not take part in this decision that whether p1 will go next or not okay so for the first situation we can see that yes progress is satisfied now second situation we'll see that there should be no deadlock also clear so deadlock we'll see that p1 and p2 both are coming together at the very same time so let's again reset these values to false and now we'll see flag one is equal to true and flag 2 is equal to true so we'll first p1 will write flag 1 is equal to true so is this will be true again we'll do the context switch flag 2 is equal to true again we'll do the context switch turn is equal to 2 turn is equal to 2 again context switch turn is equal to 1 so now turn is equal to 1 okay again context switch p1 will write while flag 2 is equal to true flag 2 is equal to true yes and turn is equal to 2 no turn is equal to 1 therefore out of these two conditions one condition is false hence this while loop will be broken and this process p1 will enter into the critical section clear so uh, this process p1 is now working in the critical section again we'll do the context switch we'll come to process p2 p2 will write while flag 1 is equal to true and turn is equal to 1 so flag 1 is equal to true yes turn is equal to 1 yes so both the conditions are true therefore it will be uh, stuck in the while loop it will continue to skip in the while loop it will not be able to go to the critical section so we can see that uh, when both the process p1 and p2 come together at that uh, time also only one process will be allowed to go to the critical section and there is no situation of deadlock so unlike the previous solution there where we have seen that uh, when both the process p1 and p2 are coming together they are stuck in the entry section only but in this one both are not stuck only one is stuck and one process is allowed to go to the critical section hence there is no problem of deadlock in this case therefore we can say that the progress requirement is fully satisfied in this particular solution clear now the third one the third situation condition is the bounded waiting so bounded waiting we know that on every uh, waiting there should be a bound value the process should not wait for more than a bound value clear so let's see again uh, again we'll reset the values to false and then we'll see whether there is a situation of bounded waiting or not so p1 right now is willing to go to the critical section p2 is not there in the scene it is not willing to go to the critical section so p1 will write flag 1 is equal to true so flag 1 is equal to true and it will write turn is equal to 2 so turn is equal to 2 and then it will write while flag 2 is equal to true and turn is equal to 2 so while flag 2 is equal to no it is not true it is false therefore out of these two conditions one condition is false hence this while loop will be broken it will go to the critical section clear now process p1 is working in the critical section at that moment p2 comes and p2 is now willing to go to the critical section it will write flag 2 is equal to true so flag 2 will now be set to true turn is equal to 1 so turn will be changed to 1 okay and now to write while flag 1 is equal to true so flag 1 is equal to true yes and turn is equal to 1 yes turn is equal to 1 so therefore both the conditions are true hence it will continue to skip in the while loop it will not be able to go to the 
critical section clear so this process is stuck here at in the entry section only in the while loop only why because p1 is still there in the critical section now after p1 completes its work in the critical section it has somewhere in its mind that after completing its work it will again go to the critical section okay so it has this uh, thing in mind so after completing its work in the critical section in the exit section it will write flag 1 is equal to false so flag 1 is equal to set to false now as soon as this process p1 does this p2 who was stuck here in the while loop it will see that flag 1 is not true now it is false now therefore one condition is false hence this while loop will be broken and it will go to the critical section clear so uh, p1 who was thinking to go to the critical section after completing its work again so it was not allowed why because p2 already requested before p1 can go to the critical section next time so therefore p2's request should be fulfilled first so therefore p2 went to the critical section now it will continue to work in the critical section after completing its work in the critical section p1 can again go fine why because suppose p2 is working in the critical section again p1 wants to go to the critical section if you come here it will write flag 1 is equal to true flag 1 will be set to true here okay and turn is equal to true 2 so turn is equal to 2 now while flag 2 is equal to true so flag 2 is equal to true yes turn is equal to 2 yes turn is equal to 2 therefore both the values are true hence this will not be able to go to the critical section so in this one we can say that uh, there was a bound value of 1 that is p2 has to go at this moment why because p2 requested for uh, the critical section before p1 could request for the next time Hence, we can say that bounded weighting is also satisfied in this case. Clear? So, in this solution, we can see that all the three requirements are fully satisfied in every situation. The mutual exclusion, the progress and the bounded weighting. Hence, we can say that this is a correct solution for the critical section problem. Thank you so much.